Tapping is the act of using a tap to cut internal threads into a part. <sighs> God. I'm not very good at it. Breaking tap sucks. I'd hazard a guess that if you do a lot of tapping, you've probably broken a couple in your lifetime. For years, I didn't really do much tapping at all, but in recent times, I've come to appreciate its usefulness a lot more. Case in point, the new die filer. Its actuation mechanism uses 27 tapped holes, which serve to keep it much more compact than it would be otherwise. But with tapping a lot, I quickly became annoyed with the process. Aside from breaking small taps being irritating, setting up parts that are not square or rectangular can be annoying and time consuming, so I wanted a solution that would let me quickly hold any part. The journey to my solution started with some research. Evidently I was not the only one with this issue since commercial options did already exist. Called some combination of tap stand, tapping jig, tapping machine, etc., these tapping tools serve to keep your taps straight and accurate, while supporting the tap to give you more control and, ideally, break less taps. These tools, especially the Grizzly one, are all pretty well reviewed, but most were out of my price range and none of them really solved my work holding issue. So I sat around designing my own solution. Off the bat, I knew I didn't want to use any sort of cross-slide style table, so I had to come up with an alternate mechanism. I came up with a method using a combination of rotary and linear movement to access everywhere on the part. I found out after that this was similar to a tool called a float lock vise, sometimes found on drill presses. My first thoughts were to have a large circular base with rails on it. I think, anyways, even I struggle to understand my own drawings sometimes, but I quickly changed the more compact solution that I ended up with. Conveniently, I already had a good mini vice designed and made, so I opted to modify this as my work holding, rather than design a new system. Version 1 came together pretty quickly, and I almost released it in that state, but after putting off releasing it for a few months, I had some ideas to make it better so I implemented them and created version 2. The main changes here were to add a latch to the back of the column to allow the whole vise setup to be removed. I also changed from an ER11 chuck to an ER16 chuck to allow me to use 8mm mounting hardware. This was specifically so that I could change to using linear bearings instead of regular ones. I used this for a while longer and found it to my liking. The final addition to the design was to make a storage case to keep everything in order, like taps, collets, and alternate vice jaws for holding different types of parts, but I'll go over that more in just a second. And that leaves us with the completed project. This will be number one in what I'm calling the 300 series of 3D printed tools, essentially a way for me to designate my best work. The Model 301 tapping arm is my answer to quick, straight threads for small parts. It uses around 250 grams of filament, takes up 22 by 24 by 10 centimeters of space, roughly. It can be printed in around a day and costs around 60 Australian dollars or 40 American dollars. Some prices may vary. A few more points of note. It sits on a base of MDF that I cut out on my 3018 CNC. You can use a base like this or bolt it directly to a bench. It attaches to a bench or the base via a spine of M10 threaded rod. The shaft is a length of 8mm rod I took from an old printer. The only modification is to drill a single hole for the handle. A spring keeps the shaft and tap from hitting the base. Okay, so for the rest of the video it's going to be kind of rambly unscripted, just going over some of the features and elements of the tool that I haven't really covered elsewhere. So. Um, to begin with, you might notice that it's bolted to a bench. Same spine, same mounting system, there's nothing changed. It's just, instead of being on the base that's normally on, it's just had bolted to a bench. This has some advantages, like it's, it's just more rigid, it feels more stable to use, um, but usually I keep it on the base so I can store it away nice and easily. Um, but anyway, so let's begin with, I've already got the rectangular vise set up in there. So let's say I had a piece like this, a bunch of holes that I wanted to tap. 
take it in the vise, clamp it down, and then this is the nice thing about this system over some of the commercial ones, is that I'm able to quickly move between all these different holes to tap them without having to unclamp the part, whereas with the commercial systems you had to unclamp and move the vice setup each time, which seemed kind of painful. With like a, a float lock setup, it's not even locking, it's just a floating setup like this, this rotary movement isn't going to move the part, so it, there's no actual reason to um, lock it down in this setup, so it keeps it nice and quick to move between different holes. Obviously these are too big to actually tap, that's just an example. So, undoing this, um, we'll go into something more interesting. So, the storage case over here, a spot for the second variety of vice. I can put the first vice. God damn it. Doing this blindfolded backwards is. There we go. I was doing it too high. Um, you can store the other vice in there, and then one vice is intended to store in here. So overall, this is the complete package I need for tapping any part that I would tap. Um, this is a quick tangent. This case stores all my taps. It stores different drawers for the vices. I need in a second. And it also stores the collets for the collet chuck. So, it's another advantage I haven't really touched on. So, this here is everything I've used for tapping everything for months. It's actually very convenient. So currently I have this vice set up with the TPU jaws in. These are specifically for if I want to clamp a tubular part. Obviously just clamp that in there. Nice and tight, no issue. Um, the die filer has a few tubes that have tapped holes in them, and this is how I did it. Um, but what if I didn't have a tubular or a rectangular part that had something weird and specific like this, almost like I made this specifically for this demonstration. Well, it's nice and quick to take out the drawers of the vise. It's using the same draw profile as the larger fractal vise, so I can change drawers between that and this system. They're the same um, standard, I suppose. But anyways, let's take out a regular fractal draw and one of these stepped drawers. These ones can go back in here, and back in there, like that. Put in a stepped draw and a fractal draw. The fractal draw is for this curved face. And then set it up kind of like that. Set it, and then just like that, you have a pretty strangely shaped part set up. Wait, which hole is it? That one. <laughs> I've had to do this take a few times, so this cart's getting kind of full of holes now. Um, but we do that, and then we can begin. Just begin the tapping. I admit I have oversized this hole intentionally for the purpose of making this demonstration go faster, because who wants to watch a man tapping, right? Um, but I've used this properly with regular sized holes for quite some time, with absolutely no issue. Okay, I think that's all the way through. There you go. And you can see if I wanted to move to either of these other holes again, absolutely no issue. So that hole is tapped, just like that. Um, and again, even if you're not tapping weirdly shaped parts like this often, it's not like a big deal to have these extra drawers. Like I think having this vise for the tube, um, the tube capabilities alone makes this worth having. Um, as a final note, let's say, again this is really only if you have it on a bench, but if I wanted to tap something long with holes in it. Really just long flat stuff, but still. Um, the vise, the jaws, the vise, yes. As a latch, the whole setup just comes off. 
And now if I was to take this tap out and lower it, and have a hole there, I would be able to tap any number of things at a nice 90 degree angle with ease. So I think that's most of what I wanted to touch on here, just kind of showing how it's meant to be used. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Um, I think it's the outro next. I hope it's the outro. And yes, just as I predicted, this is in fact the outro. Truly, my foresight is unmatched. Um, anyways, if you liked the video, remember to like the video and subscribe and you know, all that stuff. Um, the files will be linked in the description and there'll be a build guide sometime. It'll happen, probably in the next week. It's not a particularly difficult one. So, thanks as always for watching, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.